new arrests after multiple fights at one local high school. Details on charges just filed against 10 students and how districts across the metro are responding to a violent trend. Plus, we continue our coverage on the Rayshard Brooks case and the decision to drop charges against the officers involved. We'll walk through the legal analysis and hear where Brooks' family says they'll go from here. But first, new details just into our newsroom are giving us more insight into what happened after a suspect allegedly started shooting at a Midtown condominium complex. New court documents show some issues she allegedly had with the management. 11 Alive's Karis Belger joins me live in studio this midday now to break down what we know so far, Karis. So two of the victims in Monday's shooting are named in a discrimination lawsuit filed by the suspect last year. It's one of two of two that Raisa Kani is part of. The lawsuits are against the, the building management at 1280 West, where that first shooting took place. In the suit, she claims the company and managers of the condominiums violated her civil rights and financial regulations. In one of the 911 calls we've obtained, the callers can be heard describing what happened after shots were fired. It's just one person shooting at everybody she can see. She had, must have had a problem with the man in the office. She shot two people. She tried to shoot me. She, she, I, I hid in the bathroom. There were three victims total, according to police. Two 60-year-old Michael Shinners and 41-year-old Wesley Freeman died. Shinners worked as, as the general manager for the condo association, while Freeman was the suspect's boss. Family of the third victim, Mike Horn, say he's alert and wants people to know he's doing better. All right, Karis, thank you. Here is another story we are following this just in. We are learning a Metro Atlanta elementary school student has tested positive from monkeypox. The Newton County District says the student attends Mansfield Elementary School. We're told a second student at Flint Hill Elementary is also being tested. In a statement, district leaders say classrooms and other areas are being thoroughly cleaned at both schools. We are still waiting for the Georgia Department of Public Health to confirm the case. And all new student safety concerns continue at Rome High School after 10 more students are charged for fighting. It comes after 16 arrests were just made in three different fights there last week. And this is some video from inside Rome High School during one of those fights. We're told of the 10 just arrested, two are charged with battery and eight are charged with party to the crime of battery. Most of the students were 14 to 16 years old. And right now, Clayton County Schools are sending out a warning about the same trend happening there. The superintendent says students fight every year, but when comparing the first 12 days of this year to a year ago, the numbers of physical fights is up 200%. Clayton County is now encouraging students and parents to talk about this. Look at the code of conduct and utilize dist district programs for conflict resolution and some relationship workshops. All right, turning now to our forecast with meteorologist Chesie McNeil singing that same old song. Mm. Some sun, some rain, and a lot of clouds. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You know, we should you know all the home. words by now, right? <laughs> I wish I could. We have clouds on the outside. You see, this is a, a live look here at Noonan. Mostly cloudy skies on the outside. Expect those clouds to break up just a little bit and yield us some sunshine. Now, if those clouds hold on, it's going to have something to say, especially about our high temperature for this afternoon. Notice we had a few breaks up here to the far north in those clouds. Now starting to stream bite back in moving from the south to the north. A few isolated showers out there popping up as well, mainly over our westernmost counties here, count toward Carroll County, Heard County as well. And then a few up here toward the north and east of the city of Atlanta. You can see over toward uh, Homer and Banks County, we do have some light rain coming down. Again, very isolated out there for so far this afternoon. I do suspect scattered showers will be around. There could be an embedded thunderstorm that happens to pop up in a few of those, but uh, only a few at best. Well, notice this rain back off here to the west. Nice good shield of area there of rain. Uh, uh, is it moving in our direction? Will it arrive here? I'm going to answer that question for you in the full forecast coming up. But just know that the scattered showers will remain in the forecast at least through the end of the week. But it gets a little bit better as we head toward the weekend. More details on that as well. Aisha, back to you. Chesley, thank you. Continuing coverage after prosecutors' decision to drop criminal charges against the two Atlanta police officers involved in the 2020 death of Rayshar Brooks. Here's 11 Alive's Joe Hankey with the latest details on how the prosecutor came to his decision. Here we have a peaceful encounter that all of a sudden becomes a violent encounter. 
And not only does it become a violent encounter, it is quickly changing. Prosecutors Pete Scandalakis and Danny Porter walked through the body camera, cell phone, and surveillance videos. They detailed how officers Garrett Rolfe and Devin Brosnan attempted to arrest Rayshard Brooks for a suspected DUI in June of 2020. After talking with Brooks for more than a half hour, Porter says the situation turned violent. I don't think there's any other way to describe it, but Brooks proceeds to be the crap out of the two officers. During a um, scuffle, Scandalakis says Brooks knocked the officers to the ground. Brosnan's head hits the pavement and he suffers a concussion and Brooks grabs the officer's taser and fires it. He can incapacitate the officers. A taser in the hands of a person who is not trained can also be deadly. Prosecutors said under state law, the taser in Brooks's hands could be considered a deadly weapon, allowing officers to respond with deadly force if it was used against them. Scandalakis says his team broke down the videos frame by frame including when Brooks began running with Rolf chasing him. Brooks turns back and fires the taser again. Scandalakis says Rolf responded 1.1 seconds later, firing his gun at Brooks three times in half a second, hitting Brooks. Viewing the evidence through the eyes of the officers, prosecutors determined they needed to drop the charges. Given the quickly changing circumstances, was it objectively reasonable that he used deadly force? And we conclude it was. In response to yesterday's decision, attorneys for the Brooks family say they are heartbroken and confused, but not angry. They're vowing to continue their fight in civil court despite their criminal case coming to a close. The attorneys say they believe this case should have been heard before a jury. They now say civil court is where they will seek justice as they believe the officer's actions were not justified. While he was on top of them, they didn't know if he was reaching for a gun or whatever. They could have used deadly force, and I would have backed any officer that did it. But they did not. They did not. They chose not to when they were justified. But they decided to use lethal force as a man was running away 19 feet away. Activists and supporters of Brooks's family are also continuing the push for the former site of the Wendy's where Brooks died to be turned into a peace center and named there in his honor. 11 Alive has been digging into this case since the beginning. We have full in-depth coverage of the investigation for you right now on 11alive.com. Developing now, we are working to get more details after a 14-year-old boy died in a shooting. It happened on Fayetteville Road in Southeast Atlanta just before 7 last night. Investigators say there are several businesses in that area and the teen was shot multiple times. No word on a possible suspect. Gunfire at a DeKalb County gas station sends a man hurtling into the telephone pole. You can see this SUV right there on the intersection of Reed Ann Road and Panola Road. Witnesses told police the man was sitting in his car at the Chevron yesterday when someone shot at him. He tried to drive off, but he was badly hurt and ended up crashing. Right now, commissioners in DeKalb are pushing for more lights and cameras at gas stations to prevent things like this from happening. We're following new efforts to increase inspections at a Henry County Animal Sanctuary after hundreds of vultures died from bird flu. State Representative Emmanuel Jones says he and others will be drafting legislation to increase inspections at Noah's Ark and Locust Grove. A firm representing the founder of the sanctuary sent us a statement saying the sanctuary knew the birds were sick two weeks ago, but didn't close until this week. Today, President Biden is expected to make a decision on student loan relief. We have the latest details from D.C. coming up next. About damaging winds, hail, and how you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 
11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damage and winds, hail. And how you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be. Happening today, some good news may be coming from millions of Americans paying back their student loans. President Biden is expected to make an announcement on federal loan relief. Here's NBC's Bree Jackson with the latest. President Biden expected to slash up to $10,000 in federal student loan debt for borrowers making less than $125,000 a year. I mean, that's way too little. I mean, that's chump change. Over the course of my law school career, I'm expected to accrue around $70,000 over the course of three years. It's estimated over 40 million Americans are in debt for their education, totaling more than $1.7 trillion. The Biden administration is looking to relieve some of that financial stress. We want to make sure higher education is accessible, and we know education is the great equalizer. Critics warn canceling student debt could make inflation even worse. You cannot add that to the debt at a time where the debt is at near record levels and inflation is a huge problem. Republican Senator Tom Cotton tweeting, Joe Biden has had a lot of bad ideas. This might be his worst idea yet. With midterms nearing, President Biden faces pressure to do something on this issue. I think the longer that this plays out, the more that the political opponents on the right are going to uh, critique that and say this is not the way to go. Democrats have called on the president to forgive $50,000 for federal student loan debt holders. Last year, Biden said he's not willing to go that far. I'm prepared to write off the $10,000 debt. Um, but not 50. The president is also likely to extend the pause on loan payments that were scheduled to end next month. In Washington, I'm Bree Jackson for NBC News. Today, we remember former First Lady Sandra Deal after just passing away from cancer. I'm a teacher and a mama and a grandmama, and I just have to encourage them. Sam, scurry to the Education was her passion, and she traveled to schools in every corner of Georgia while her husband, Nathan Deal, was governor. Deal's family says she died yesterday at her home in North Georgia. They said she had breast cancer, and it later spread to her brain. The family released a statement saying, in part, she leaves a world that's better because she was here. Governor Brian Kemp also released a statement on her passing, praising her work as a lifelong educator and saying her soul was full and joyous. To the very end, Deal will be laid to rest this Saturday in Gainesville. Right now, there is a warning for hundreds of thousands of SUV owners to not park your car in your garage. The recall covers more than 245,000 Hyundai Palisades and 36,000 Kia Tellurides. The Department of Transportation says the tow hitch on the SUVs could catch on fire and the fire could easily spread if the car is in your garage. So far, there have been about 25 fires reported across the U.S. and Canada, but no crashes and no injuries. Today, the three men convicted of killing Ahmaud Albury are in a state prison in Jackson, Georgia. Father and son Gregory and Travis McMichael, along with their neighbor William Roddy Bryant, were just transferred about four hours from South Georgia after being sentenced on federal hate crimes charges. A judge denied a request from the McMichaels to serve their time in federal prison. An attorney for Travis McMichael said he feared he'd be killed in state prison. 
The matchups are set for some of the November midterm elections after another day of primary voting in Florida. It's going to be former Representative Charlie Crist representing the Democrats against sitting Governor Ron DeSantis. Democratic Representative Val Demings will face off against incumbent Marco Rubio for the Senate seat. And in a clash of powerful Democrats in New York, NBC News projects Representative Jerry Nadler as the winner of the primary and the likely winner in the fall. All right, we are looking at uh, some light rain for the most part over us right now. And my uh, map's jumping around a little bit, but you can see where we have that rain mainly over toward our west is where you're going to find that very isolated now mainly over toward Carroll County her county got a little few little sprinkles there a little bit more back off to the west of us just across the border into parts of Alabama we also have more up toward the north and east as well that's where it's going to be as we head through the rest of the afternoon expecting scattered showers to be around there could be an embedded thunderstorm or two in there I think the clouds will have something to say about that we get a little more sunshine in here could destabilize the atmosphere a bit and some of those thunderstorms could fire up on us uh, where we have those developing could be some brief heavy rain as well so we'll be on the lookout for it. Other than that, scattered showers around temperatures in the 70s. And I got up to 80 already in Atlanta, 81 degrees currently, 81 also in Peachtree City, 81 down in Thomaston. You got 79 degrees in Georgia's Rome. Last couple of days, that's where the warm spot has been. You're already at 85 degrees down here in McDonough, Locust Grove in Southern Henry County. Uh, 78 degrees in Noonan, Peachtree City, you're at 81 degrees, so warming up. 79 degrees, Powder Springs, and we're toward Marietta, 77 in Mapleton. 80 in Dallas, in the heart of pa Paulding County. 78 degrees, Tucker, and we're in DeKalb, 81 in downtown Atlanta. Going to give it a 6 out of a possible 11 today on the wasometer. 86 for an afternoon high temperature. Yep, I think we'll get that high. We did it yesterday. We'll be right back up there again for this afternoon. That's still below our average for this time of year. We should be in the upper 80s, right around 88, 89 degrees. 40% chance for those scattered showers. Again, an embedded thunderstorm or two. We're not looking at much in the way of any severe weather at all today, but there could be uh, one or two of those thunderstorms that begin to break out. Notice this heavy rain almost remaining stationary over in central, we'll say west central parts of Alabama, not making much progress to the east as it does. A lot of that starts to break apart and uh, turn into more light precipitation. The area of low pressure associated with it slow back off to the west. Some models showing that making its way over toward us and then there's other models that show it staying right where it is and so we'll see we'll try to follow that if it does make it over here it could be in here uh, by the wee hours of the morning tomorrow morning or later in the afternoon either way i think we'll still continue to see those scattered showers and thunderstorms popping up stationary boundary just about on top of us now will nudge to the north just a little bit allowing some more of that moisture to begin to move back into our forecast area so today we got the 40 percent chance of rain tomorrow i'm going to up it to a 50 percent chance we'll go back down to a 40 percent chance on friday and you notice the trend as we head through the weekend yeah, lower chances for the rain. In fact, down to a 20% chance by the time we get to Sunday. Checking out the tropics as well. We got some activity, low threats, but we still have the activity out there. And noticing a couple of thunderstorms now. Uh, coming off the coast of Africa there, very low threat over the next two days. 20% chance for it to develop into a name storm uh, over the next five days. Same with the one that's well down into the Atlantic and will continue to slide in our direction. But uh, again, not... Not a good chance, not favorable, right, at least right now. Here it is, our forecast track model. You can follow along with me with the time right there at the top of the screen. It shows mostly cloudy skies. You notice a few breaks here and there. That'll yield us a little bit of sunshine, helping us to heat up into those middle 80s. Uh, a few uh, scattered showers with some embedded thunderstorms, certainly possible in the area. That should diminish once you get toward 8, 9 o'clock tonight. Notice this model showing that widespread rain finally making it into our area by tomorrow morning. That will continue to scoot over toward the east. We'll have scattered precipitation once we get to the afternoon. And and we'll do it all over again as we head into Friday, looking for a few scattered showers, getting that 40% chance on Friday with 85 degrees for the high. As the chance for rain goes down over the weekend, we'll notice the temperature going up 86 on Saturday, 87 degrees on Saturday, 86 degrees on Sunday with only a 20% chance for rain. And we'll do that again on Monday of next week. Aisha. Still to come, there is a trend picking up traction for parents buying back to school clothes on a budget. We'll show you how to dress your kids for success without breaking the bank. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. 
Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you'll be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. Is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging... Right now, some Cobb County parents who rely on the school bus are frustrated trying to get their kids to school on time. They tell us even after a bus driver pay raise to help with the delays, there are still some problems there. Parents say riding the school bus can now take up to an hour. They say the schools are not notifying them when issues come up. One mother in Smyrna tells us for hours she didn't get any updates from the school district on her bus county's app. That is after the bus broke down during the drop off route. The district says buses are routinely inspected every 20 days, but mechanical breakdowns sometimes still happen. School leaders are also asking for patience as they hire more bus drivers. The first new months of school can be a really stressful time for parents, especially as you shop for clothes and supplies. As NBC's Liz McLaughlin shows us, there are some ways that you can save your green by going green. Some parents are avoiding a big back to school bill by buying secondhand first. I buy almost nothing new. Kat Steck is a mom and former teacher who started Junkyard Journals to chronicle her goals of buying less and saving more through thrifting. A little backpack, clothes for school. I took her to the thrift store and let her pick out outfits. She's also gotten free items through Buy Nothing neighborhood groups in communities nationwide. So I'm trying to use that option before I go and buy new. Amazon shoppers can make those new purchases greener by downloading a tool called Finch that generates a sustainability rating based on six environmental footprints. You'll be able to see the score of that product and then a couple of alternatives in case you're interested in making a better purchasing decision. Making eco-friendly choices could make a money-saving difference too, such as swapping the ongoing expense of plastic lunch bags for reusable silicone containers. I'm going to get something that's sustainable, that's reusable, good for me, good for my pocketbook. Dr. Claudia Benitez-Nelson is part of Science Moms, a group that aims to join parents together to talk about tackling climate change and using their voices to make a difference. Moms, parents, they have the ability to, to, to go to their school boards and say, hey, guess what? We, we really want you. Next time you buy buses, we want you to invest in the electric. One green initiative that's already rolling out. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News. 
Though small ways to save could make a big difference in the budget this year, the average cost of school supplies for families with children in elementary through high school is a whopping $864. That is according to the National Retail Federation. Happening today in Clayton County, the Board of Commissioners wants to help put a few dollars back in your pocket by helping you pay your rent. They're holding an event at the Flint River Community Center on Flint River Road tonight from 6 to 9 p.m. Anyone living in Clayton County who has been impacted financially by the pandemic can apply for that assistance. It's a brand new podcast just for parents. We'll check out the new tool from Children's Healthcare of Atlanta right after the break. Near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you'll be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. Is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather. Parents, you ever wish you could just reach for a handbook on how to raise these kids? Well, there isn't one. There's always a new situation, a challenge, or a question, but now there is a resource in Atlanta that can help you out. You're busy, but you want the best for your kids. We're here to help. This is Hope and Will. Children's Healthcare of Atlanta has launched a new parenting podcast. They hope it will help empower parents, take some pressure off, and just answer some really important questions. It utilizes their experts to cover all kinds of helpful topics. And so from drowning to internet safety, we have a mother who found out her eight-year-old daughter was being preyed upon in a chat room she didn't even know existed. In addition to that, it's something as simple as picky eating. Real tangible takeaways for the parent that they can do today to help improve the situation within their home. And you can listen right now on Apple, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. 11 Live News at Noon starts now. 
all new arrests after multiple fights at one local high school. Details on charges just filed against 10 students and how districts across the metro are responding to a violent trend. Plus, we continue our coverage on the Rayshard Brooks case and the decision to drop charges against the officers involved. We'll walk through the legal analysis and hear from Brooks' family on where they plan to go from here. But first this noon, new details just into our newsroom, giving us some more insight into what happened after a suspect allegedly started shooting at a midtown condominium complex. New court documents show some issues she allegedly had with the management company. 11 Alive's Karis Belder joining me now in studio to break down what we know so far, Karis. So two of the victims in Monday shooting are named in a discrimination lawsuit filed by the suspect last year. It's one of two, Haisa Kani is a part of of, and the lawsuits are against the building management at 1280 West, where that first shooting took place. In the suit, she claims the company and managers of the condominiums violated her civil rights and financial regulations. In one of the 911 calls we've obtained, the callers can be heard describing what happened after shots were fired. It's just one person shooting at everybody she can see. She had, must have had a problem with the management office. She shot two people. She tried to shoot me. She, she, I, I hid in the bathroom. There were three victims total, according to police. Two people, 60-year-old Michael Shinners and 41-year-old Wesley Freeman, died. Shinners worked as the general manager for the condo association, while Freeman was the suspect's boss. And family of, the vict of a third victim, Mike Horn, say he's alert and wants people to know he's doing better. This just in, we are learning a Metro Atlanta elementary school student has tested positive for monkeypox. The Newton County District says the student attends Mansfield Elementary School. We're told a second student at Flint Hill Elementary is also being tested. In a statement, district leaders say classrooms and other areas are being cleaned thoroughly at both schools. We are still waiting for the Georgia Department of Public Health to confirm the case. And all new student safety concerns continue at Rome High School after 10 more students are arrested and charged for fighting. It comes after 16 arrests were just made in three different fights last week. This is video inside Rome High of one of those fights. We're told of the 10 just arrested, two are charged with battery and eight are charged with party to the crime of battery. Most of the students were 14 to 16 years old. And right now, Clayton County Schools are sending out a warning about the same trend. The superintendent says students fight every year, but when comparing the first 12 days of this year to a year ago, the number of physical fights is up 200%. Clayton County now encouraging students and parents to talk about this, look at the code of conduct and utilize district programs for conflict resolution and relationship workshops. Let's get you outside this noon. Here we are on a hump day. Another cloudy one for us in muggy too. Yeah, a little touch of muggy out there. I'm calling it warm and humid. You know, that's what I'll call it. We are finding just a few breaks in the clouds here. This is over towards Circle 75. You can see the sun shining on areas of the highway there. Uh, that's the way it's going to be. A mix of sun and clouds for us for the rest of the afternoon. Shower could break out at any time, but um, a lot of us won't see that. It's a 30 to 40 percent chance for the rest of the afternoon. Already starting to see some isolated showers popping up on the radar. You can see some up here to the far north and east of the city and then down to the south and west as well. Starting to see a few pop up now over into uh, western Paulding County. Just starting to develop there. There could be an embedded thunderstorm in one or two of those. We're not expecting widespread severe weather at all, but where we have some of those thunderstorms developing, there could be some brief heavy rain. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, south of Peachtree City over in the to, uh, southeastern parts of Coweta County over in the Carroll County as well. You got some little sprinkles coming down in the city of Atlanta and around the perimeter. Nothing right now, but expect a few scattered showers to roll through uh, later on this afternoon. Notice this widespread rain that's back off to the west of us. If you notice, it's not making much progress moving over toward the east. In fact, some of that heavy rain starting to head a little bit further down to the south. Could that make it over here? Well, we'll be tracking it for you and let you know in the full forecast coming up. Plus, we'll be looking at uh, our temperatures as well. Right now we're in the 80s, but we'll be going up to the or low 80s, but we'll be going up to the upper 80s uh, as we head through the rest of the afternoon. But if the clouds hold on, we could have say, something to say about that. We'll talk about it in the full forecast straight ahead. Aisha, back to you. Continuing coverage after a prosecutor's drop decision to drop the criminal charges against the two Atlanta police officers involved in the 2020 death of Rayshard Brooks. Here's 11 Alive's Joe Henke with the latest details on how the prosecutor came to his decision. Here we have a peaceful encounter that all of a sudden becomes a violent encounter. 
And not only does it become a violent encounter, it is quickly changing. Prosecutors Pete Scandalakis and Danny Porter walked through the body camera, cell phone, and surveillance videos. They detailed how officers Garrett Rolf and Devin Brosnan attempted to arrest Rayshard Brooks for a suspected DUI in June of 2020. After talking with Brooks for more than a half hour, Porter says the situation turned violent. I don't think there's any other way to describe it, but Brooks proceeds to be the crap out of the two officers. During a scuffle, Scandalakis says Brooks knocked the officers to the ground. Brosnan's head hits the pavement and he suffers a concussion and Brooks grabs the officer's taser and fires it. He can incapacitate the officers. A taser in the hands of a person who is not trained can also be deadly. Prosecutors said under state law, the taser in Brooks's hands could be considered a deadly weapon, allowing officers to respond with deadly force if it was used against them. Scandalakis says his team broke down the videos frame by frame, including when Brooks began running with Rolf chasing him. Brooks turns back and fires the taser again. Scandalakis says Rolf responded 1.1 seconds later, firing his gun at Brooks three times in half a second, hitting Brooks. Brooks. Viewing the evidence through the eyes of the officers, prosecutors determined they needed to drop the charges. Given the quickly changing circumstances, was it objectively reasonable that he used deadly force? And we conclude it was. In response to yesterday's decision, attorneys for the Brooks family say they are heartbroken and confused, but not angry. They're vowing to continue their fight in civil court despite their criminal case coming to a close. The attorneys say they believe this case should have been heard before a jury. They now say civil court is where they will seek justice as they believe the officer's actions were not justified. While he was on top of them, they didn't know if he was reaching for a gun or whatever. They could have used deadly force and I would have backed any officer that did it. But they did not. They did not. They chose not to when they were justified. But they decided to use lethal force as a man was running away 19 feet away. Activists and supporters of Brooks's family are also continuing the push for the former site of the Wendy's where Brooks died to be turned into a peace center named in his honor. 11 Alive has been digging into this case since the beginning. We have full in-depth coverage right now for you on 11alive.com. Developing now, we are working to get more details after a 14-year-old boy died in a shooting. It happened on Fayetteville Road in Southeast Atlanta just before 7 last night. Investigators say there are several businesses in that area and the teen was shot multiple times. No word yet on any possible suspects. Gunfire at a DeKalb County gas station sends a man hurtling into a telephone pole. You can see the SUV right there on the intersection at Redan Road and Panola Road. Witnesses told police that man was sitting in his car at the Chevron yesterday when someone shot at him. He tried to drive off, but he was hurt so bad he ended up crashing. Right now, commissioners in DeKalb are pushing for more lights and cameras at gas stations to prevent things like this from happening. We're following new efforts to increase inspections at a Henry County animal sanctuary after hundreds of vultures died from bird flu. State Representative Emmanuel Jones says he and others will be drafting legislation to increase inspections at Noah's Ark and Locust Grove. A firm representing the founder of the sanctuary sent us a statement saying the sanctuary knew the birds were sick two weeks ago but didn't close until this week. Breaking news just into the newsroom, President Biden announces his plan for student loan relief. Brand new details from Washington coming up next. Ready, wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And where Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News. Is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County, where a neighborhood is now.
where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the stronger storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail, and... How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News we began with breaking news this morning. is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This is breaking news just in. Just moments ago, President Joe Biden delivered on his campaign promise on providing $10,000 in debt cancellation for millions of Americans. It also includes up to $10,000 more for those with the greatest financial need. President Biden tweeting that borrowers who earn less than $125,000 a year or families earning less than $250,000 would be eligible for the $10,000 loan forgiveness. For recipients of Pell Grants, the federal government would cancel up to an additional $10,000 in federal loan debt. And we have more breaking news here at home in Atlanta. Police say they have made an arrest after someone shot a three-year-old little boy. You were looking at the body camera footage of that arrest last Friday. It happened earlier this month as a child was leaving a barber shop with his dad in Castleberry Hill. The suspect is now charged with criminal attempt to commit murder and criminal street gang participation. Today, we are remembering former First Lady Sandra Deal after she passed away from cancer. I'm a teacher and a mama and a grandmama, and I just have to encourage them. Education was her passion, and she traveled to schools in every corner of Georgia while her husband, Nathan Deal, was governor. Deal's family says she died yesterday at her home in North Georgia. They say she had breast cancer, and it later spread to her brain. The family released a statement saying, in part, she leaves the world better because she was here. Governor Brian Kemp also released a statement on her passing, praising her work as a lifelong educator and saying her soul was full and joyous to the very end. Deal will be laid to rest this Saturday in Gainesville. Right now, there's a warning for hundreds of thousands of SUV owners to not park their truck in the garage. The recall covers more than 245,000 Hyundai Palisades and 36,000 Kia Tellurides. The Department of Transportation says the tow hitch on the SUVs could catch on fire and the fire can easily spread if the car is in the garage. So far, there have been about 25 fires reported across the U.S. and Canada, but no crashes and no injuries. Today, the three men convicted of killing Ahmad Albury are in state prison in Jackson, Georgia. Father and son Gregory and Travis McMichael, along with their neighbor, William Roddy Bryan, were just transferred about four hours from South Georgia after being sentenced on federal hate crimes charges. A judge denied requests from the McMichaels to serve their time in federal custody. An attorney for Travis McMichael said he feared he'd be killed in state prison. All right, the matchups are set for some of the November midterm elections after another day of primary voting in Florida. It will be former representative Charlie Chris representing the Democrats against sitting Governor Ron DeSantis. Democratic Representative Val Demings will face off against incumbent Marco Rubio for the Senate seat. And in a clash of powerful Democrats in New York, NBC News projects Representative Jerry Nadler as the winner of the primary and the likely winner in the fall. So as students return to school, experts are urging parents to get those routine vaccinations for their kids amid an overall vaccine decline across the U.S. We're hearing from experts about why they say childhood vaccinations are crucial. Jennifer Bellamy has the story.
The pandemic has affected all aspects of life, including schools and childhood vaccination rates. If you think back over time, there were diseases like measles, mumps, chicken pox, whooping cough were fairly common. And we no longer see these diseases that often. And that's because of our immunization program. In CDC data released in April, researchers compared state and local immunization programs across the U.S. In the 2020-2021 school year, they found vaccination coverage decrease by about 1% for all vaccines when compared to the school year before. That's the first time we've seen a dip like this in a long time. There you go. Dr. Julie Morita, a pediatrician and member of the CDC Advisory Committee to the director, says in order to keep vaccine-preventable diseases at bay, we have to keep the level of routine vaccinations high. She says part of the decrease came from doctor's offices not being open during the height of the pandemic. But on top of that, there was a bit of spillover because parents had questions and concerns about the COVID vaccines. They seem relatively new. There were questions about safety and the effectiveness of the vaccines. And there may have been a bit of spillover into the other routinely recommended childhood vaccines. While we have strong evidence that COVID vaccines are safe and effective, there's even more evidence and even longer duration of use of these other vaccines. So we know that they're safe and effective and they prevent really serious diseases. CDC researchers say enforcing vaccination policies and follow ups with under vaccinated students are key to improving vaccination rates. Good afternoon, Chesley. Good afternoon, Aisha, and uh, a beautiful day out there. Take a look at this. Yeah, you see the clouds in the background there. It's a King Queen building right there, 400, where it meets I-285 coming together now, coming together. And of course, you know, construction. But we don't have to deal with anything out of that right now, nor do we have to deal with rain around that area of the perimeter. We do have some ice showers around the area already starting to pop up here. We, we can see some isolated showers that will become a little bit more scattered as we head into the afternoon. Plus, we could see a few of those with embedded thunderstorms where we could see some very heavy rains, frequent lightning out of them. Down here to the south and east is where you can find most of that popping up. You can see over toward uh, extreme western Paulding County, over toward Carroll County as well. In the central portions of the area, we do have uh, some light sprinkles coming down. Look at that a little bit little bit of yellow right there mm -hmm. in extreme southeastern Coweta County uh, where it's starting to intensify just a bit there. That's the way it's going to be as we head through the afternoon, becoming a little bit more scattered with like what you see back off to the west of us over into Alabama. We'll have those scattered showers around and I think that's what we'll see for the most part. Again, just a few of us will experience one of those embedded thunderstorms. They'll be on the isolated side. Temperature wise, we're in the 80s already in a lot of spots. Yeah, you're in the middle 80s down into uh, southern Henry County. You're looking at the Locust Grove at uh, 85 degrees, 83 Peachtree City, 80 at Fayetteville, right on the doorstep there in Chattahoochee Hills, you're at 79, 79 also in Mapleton, you're at 80 in Powder Springs, already made it, Dallas at 80 as well, just turned to 82 right there on the spot, 80 in Tucker, 81 down in East Point, and 82 degrees at the Fulton County Airport. So it's going to be a, a warm and humid afternoon for us. We do have that moisture over us. Uh, we'll get some sunshine in, it'll help to heat us up a little bit today to uh, 86 for an afternoon high temperature. We'll give it a six out of a possible 11 today on the wisometer. 30 to 40 percent chance for those scattered showers to be around. And again, we're already starting to see some of those begin to pop up in the area. Uh, notice this widespread rainfall off to our west and not much eastward movement with this. We're tracking the area of low pressure, which is still back off to the west, slowly making its way over toward the east. Some models have this moving into the area uh, later on tonight into tomorrow morning where others just keep it back off to the west and allow it to dissipate. And so we'll have to watch that. We're also watching this stationary boundary that's just about on top of us. It will be nudging to the north as well. And I think that's going to allow a little bit more of that moisture to come our way, which of course will increase our chance for the rain. Going to go up to a 50% chance for rain for your Thursday by Friday back down to a 40% chance. And look at this. The trend would be downward as we head through the weekend. 30% chance on Saturday, Sunday, a 20% chance for that rain. Not bad at all. You got plans to head out to the tropics on those islands, your private island that you have out there? Well, we're checking uh, as this uh, slowness to the tropical season continues, we're getting closer and closer to the peak of the hurricane season. And right now, there's very low chances with the couple of those cl uh, clusters of thunderstorms, even one rolling off the coast of Africa right now, 20% chance over the next five days for development. Our forecast track model shows those isolated showers with a few embedded thunderstorms popping up this afternoon. There's that widespread rain. This particular model showing that rain moving in uh, in the early morning hours. This is by 545 in the morning. We'll be with us through our morning commute if that holds together. And then we'll see the scatter variety as we head through the afternoon. We'll continue to see that as we head into Friday. But again, lower threats as we head into the weekend. And with the low chance for rain, the temperatures will begin to increase.
everyone, and welcome to Atlanta & Company Plus. I'm Christine Pallara. Market by Macy's continues to expand its footprint with a brand new store in Johns Creek. Our own Kara Kinnear recently got a sneak peek. Thanks so much, Christine. I'm thrilled to be here at the new market by Macy's, and we're gonna tell you a little bit about what's going on here. So I'm so excited to be joined by store manager, Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Kara. Okay, let's jump in. Where are we, and what is Market by Macy's for those who might not know? Yeah, well, we're so excited to bring Market by Macy's to the local Johns Creek community. And it's basically a smaller, more curated version of your normal Macy's store with an easy to an open to shop environment. Okay, let's talk about the open to shop environment. I love that you really thought about about the customer and it's easy to park. It's so fashion forward. Talk about what you can expect when you walk inside. Yeah, so our customers love coming in and seeing our newness and must haves that are really elevated in our trim pavilions. And we wanna inspire them to really own their style. And they are gonna come and find the brands that they know and love at Macy's. So Polo Ralph Lauren, Tommy Hilfiger, Levi's, and even our private brands like INC, Bar 3, and the new additions to Oaken and now this as well. All right, the luxury brands we've always come to expect right. plus some new and fun things sprinkled throughout the year okay we thank have you. some shopping to do so we will see y'all later fantastic we'd like to thank market by macy's for sponsoring that segment Still to come, there is a trend picking up traction for parents buying back to school clothes on a budget. We'll show you how to dress your kids for success without breaking the bank. A mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Fighting social inequality is on all of us. That's why 11 Alive is committed to sharing diverse perspectives, exposing injustice, and finding solutions. Voices for Equality, sponsored by Georgia Power and our other partners. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you see weather happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damage and winds, hail. And how you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening uh, 11 now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap. Right now, some Cobb County parents who rely on the school bus are frustrated trying to get their kids to school on time. They tell us even after a bus driver pay raise to help with the delays, there are still some problems. Parents say riding the school bus can now take up to an hour, and they say schools are not notifying them when issues come up. One mother in Smyrna tells us for hours she did not get any updates from the school district or the county's bus app. That is after a bus broke down during the drop off route. The district says buses are routinely inspected every 20 days, but mechanical breakdowns can still happen. School leaders are also asking for patience as they hire more bus drivers. The first few months of school can be really stressful for parents, especially as you shop for clothes and supplies. But as NBC's Liz McLaughlin shows us, there are some ways you can save your green by going green. Some parents are avoiding a big back to school bill by buying secondhand first. I buy almost nothing new. Kat Steck is a mom and former teacher who started Junkyard Journals to chronicle her goals of buying less and saving more through thrifting. A little backpack, clothes for school. I took her to the thrift store and let her pick out outfits. She's also gotten free items through Buy Nothing neighborhood groups in communities nationwide. So I'm trying to use that option before I go and buy new. Amazon shoppers can make those new purchases greener by downloading a tool called Finch that generates a sustainability rating based on six environmental footprints. You'll be able to see the score of that product and then a couple of alternatives in case you're interested in making a better purchasing decision. Making eco-friendly choices could make a money-saving difference too. 
such as swapping the ongoing expense of plastic lunch bags for reusable silicone containers. I'm going to get something that's sustainable, that's reusable, good for me, good for my pocketbook. Dr. Claudia Benitez Nelson is part of Science Moms, a group that aims to join parents together to talk about tackling climate change and using their voices to make a difference. Moms, parents, they have the ability to, to, to go to their school boards and say, hey, Guess what? We, we really want you. Next time you buy buses, we want you to invest in the electric. One green initiative that's already rolling out. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News. And those small ways to save could actually make a big difference in the budget. This year, the average cost of school supplies for families with kids in elementary through high school is a whopping $864. That's according to the National Retail Federation. Happening today in Clayton County, the Board of Commissioners wants to help put a few dollars back in your pocket to help you pay your rent. They're holding an event at the Flint River Community Center on Flint River Road. That is tonight from 6 to 9. Anyone living in Clayton County who has been impacted financially by the pandemic can apply for that assistance. And tomorrow, DeKalb County is taking some steps to address the housing crisis impacting its community. District 7 Commissioner Lorraine Cochran Johnson is hosting a special town hall about the issue. That event will cover current efforts in place on the local and state level to provide some permanent housing solutions. The town hall is virtual and happening via Zoom at 6 p.m. tomorrow. Head to the county's website for more information. Coming up, a local duo takes the national stage. More from their performance on America's Got Talent next. They're happening now across Metro Atlanta. These severe storms are now closing in. We could be talking about damaging winds, hail. And How you can plan ahead by knowing what's coming overhead. Heavy storms are rolling in. Expect pop-up thunderstorms and rain all day long. And how you be weather ready wherever you are. We expect at any moment a tornado warning could be issued. The 11 Alive Storm Trackers. It's how you'll be prepared and stay safe. 11 Alive Morning News. We began with breaking news this morning. Is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Live News app to use Near Me. 11 Live News at 11 p.m is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder. JoJo and Bree, who appeared last night on America's Got Talent. It is a family duo from Jonesboro. That's an uncle and niece. As you just saw, they sang You Gotta Be, and they had the crowd on his feet. Only two of the 11 acts will move on to next month's finale. We are cheering them on from ATL, and you can watch the results tonight at 8 p.m. right here on 11 Alive. We wish them the best. We thank you for watching 11 Alive News at noon. Stay safe and make it a great Wednesday. is where you know what's happening now. 11 Alive is live on the scene. Where you can confidently plan ahead. This severe weather is intensifying. By knowing what's coming overhead. And we're Atlanta's traffic expert. We've seen delays almost 30 minutes worth of time. Helps you get there on time. Every time. 11 Alive Morning News is where you start the day prepared. Watch weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. 
If you see breaking news or severe weather near you, snap it and share it using Near Me on the 11 Live News app. Want to verify if something's true or false? Record your question and send it. Download the 11 Alive News app to use near me. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. is where you find out what's happening now across Metro Atlanta. We begin tonight with breaking news out of Cobb County where a neighborhood is now. Where you stay a step ahead of severe weather. Our storm risk has now been upgraded to a... And the only place where you can verify fact versus fiction. 11 Alive can verify that claim is false. 11 Alive News at 11 p.m. Where you end the day ready to take on tomorrow. Weather can't run from the 11 Alive Thunder Truck. A mobile weather center with the power and speed.